Okay, so before we get started, we have a huge favor to ask. Have you guys ever been given a closing gift by a realtor when you bought any form of property? And did you actually use it or did it get thrown in the trash? So in the comments below, let us know if you've ever received a closing gift, what it was, and if you actually used it. Hey, what's up? We're Jenny and Davis. We are trying to start a furniture business in the Houston area while juggling our part-time jobs as hurricane hunters. Yes. And it's been a crazy summer. When we say juggle, we mean juggle. And it's really hard because we're not in Houston. We're driving back and forth. I mean, we're doing full-time work out here trying to get certified to fly through hurricanes, which is no easy feat, believe yeah. it or not. <laughs> anyway, we're just, we're just trying to stay busy and keep knocking yeah. stuff out. And one of the things that we've been able to do is build some really cool prototypes for the products that we're going to build at scale mm -hmm. when we return to Houston. Yep, so you guys saw the charcuterie board video. We kind of ironed all those issues and questions for ourselves out in that last video, and then we moved on to cutting boards. So that's what we've spent a little bit of time in the past couple of months figuring out as well. a couple of constraints for these boards and our biggest constraint is going to be price after talking to a couple of realtors and figuring out how the whole closing gift process works and where the money comes from we've learned that the realtors can really only spend a hundred dollars roughly on these cutting boards which means we can't go spending a whole lot of money and make the most luxurious cutting board ever we need to respect the fact that each one can really only be sold for $100 and backtrack what we need to do to get to that price point. So there's that price constraint on one hand, but on the other hand, we need these boards to look really luxurious. They need to be like two or three steps above a cutting board that you just see in any typical store that you go to. So that's kind of our issue is how do we make them look like they cost more than $100 per board but the price point is still at $100 per board. Last night we had something, tonight I'll be kissing, but I don't really have a case. what we came up with. This is the cutting board we designed that is perfectly within the price constraints that we talked about earlier, but we think also looks really, really nice. Um, it's big, it's thick, it's sturdy. If you look at the sides, it stands up tall. We were able to put feet on the bottom. We were able to use a couple different species of woods to um, have some color contrast. Now, is it like 
Purple Heart and Paduke and all those more expensive hardwoods? No, not necessarily, but it still looks really nice when you take a first glance at it. We also wanted it to be a really big cutting board. This one is 17 by 11 because honestly, a lot of the cutting boards you buy in the store are just too small. Like how am I supposed to fit everything I'm chopping on a tiny little board? So this is the design we landed on and we like this because it's gonna be the same for all the boards. Like this is our style that we've decided on. I mean, it's just, it's stripey, so it's pretty simple. It's repeatable. We can do it very easily. But when you look at it, you're like, oh wow, that's very sleek and modern. And we're also incorporating some laser engraving. Um, obviously we just did our own name on this one because it's for us, our prototype. But on the back is where we can put all the realtors information. So they can have all their personal stuff on here so that the buyers have something to go back to if they ever want to use that realtor again. And this right here, this little square of laser engraving is the most important part to these boards because that's what's going to sell them. They get an advertising boost by making their clients happy with a nice, pretty, big, thick cutting board. So another thing we really liked about these boards were the feet. Um, they're just little rubber feet. We found them on Amazon, but they're like perfect for these boards. They're the perfect size. They're not too big. It's the perfect density. Like they're not too soft and bendy. They're pretty sturdy because you need something sturdy to hold up a board of this size, but you also want it to flex a little bit in case the board goes out of square over time. So that's why we like these ones a lot. We used four quarter lumber to build this board and it, it worked out nicely, um, but I think we're gonna switch to eight quarter just to make the glue up and cutting the strips and everything go a lot faster. But other than that, it's pretty much done. I think we've decided that this is our official prototype that we wanna start using and advertising to realtors. So it was really hard for us to make some of these decisions to cut back for quality on the board. As much as we'd love to put like, you know, Paduke and Purple Heart and some of the really pretty looking woods in there, just not an economical way to do it at the $100 price point. Good Lord, like these boards are way higher quality than anything you'd find in the store. It's just, we need the customer to experience that emotionally and packaging is one of the easiest ways to do that. So uh, like Jenny said, we're gonna have a video on that very soon. Um, it just, it just hurts that we can't make the best board we can possibly make. Uh, and, and we know you guys are feeling that too, because that's what we get comments about all the time. It's just, when you run a business, it's not about you anymore. It's about what your customer is willing to buy. And in this case, the market that we're going after, they don't want the best cutting board in the world. They want a really nice cutting board but they've got a price limit. At the end of the day, these realtors just want two things. They want their information to be remembered by the homeowners, so they call them again, and they want a nice gift to be able to do that for them. So uh, in order for that gift to be used, it needs to be high enough quality that the customer will use it. So that's why we're going through this incredibly difficult process of building a nice cutting board um, is because once we tap into that market, that's gonna unlock everything else for our business. And a lot of people feel bad. A lot of people get their pride wrapped up in what they're doing and how they're building. And you just can't do that in a business. That's how you're gonna wreck the, that's how you're gonna wreck the business. I mean, I completely lost a web design business because that's what I did. I, I tried to strong arm the customers into the best website I could possibly build instead of just doing what the customer wanted. So I drove that business into the ground. Just like everything, this is just as much a people game as it is a woodworking game. So yeah, you can be a great woodworker, but if you can't meet people's expectations or get along with customers well, you're not gonna make a very good business for yourself. Anyway, so that has been our struggle through developing a cutting board prototype. And doing all the boring things like writing checklists and steps and- But we are so yeah. excited to get back to Houston and yes. to- Yes, oh, we can't wait. Oh, we got a big long list of stuff to do and that just gets us really excited because we're weird like that. But yes. anyway, if you'd like to keep following along, uh, subscribe and uh, watch us as we bumble through Houston trying to start a woodworking <laughs> business. See you later.